So now we're analyzing the case that we are checking the hypothesis the same for population mean and sigma the population standard deviation is missing. Let's take a look at one example together. In this example, we have a used car dealer says that, claims that the mean price, okay, keyword mean, mean price of a two year old sedan in good condition is at least, guys, keyword, at least. $20,500. You suspect this claim is incorrect. As a statistician, you're going to randomly select 14 similar vehicles, and you're going to calculate the mean and the standard deviation of your sample. So all of these information are about your sample. The mean price of the sample is $19,850, and the standard deviation is $1,084. So as you can see, the standard deviation is for the sample. It's not for the population. Question says, is there enough evidence to reject the dealer's claim at 5% level of significance? Well, let us take a look at that word. In the very first step, you're going to construct your null and alternative hypothesis. Step one, what is the null hypothesis? What is the alternative hypothesis? Remember that we have a keyword, at least. Keyword, at least. At least is larger than or equal to. Since it has equality, it means that the null is given to us. So null hypothesis says, hey, the mean price is larger than or equals to $20,500. This guy is the claim of a dealer. So you're going to write the claim next to your null hypothesis. This is your claim C. The alternative hypothesis, the opposite of larger than or equal to, is less than. Mu is less than $20,500. Okay. Now, in the second step, we need to have a standardized test statistic. Standardized test statistic. Well, is it going to be z equals to x bar minus mu divided by sigma times square root of n? Or is it going to be t equals to x bar minus mu divided by s times square root of n? Which one it is? Which case is that the one that we're working with? Is it the z or is it the t? Remember that the question says, we don't have any information about the population standard deviation. This guy is missing. Sigma is missing. So we are not allowed to use Z. We need to use T. It means that we are not allowed to use normal CDF. Normal CDF is not allowed. You're going to use a T distribution. Okay, so let me find T. T is going to be X bar. The mean of the sample is $19,850 minus the mean $20,500 divided by S, sample standard deviation, 1,084 times square root of N, and the sample size, 14. Well, if you do the calculation, your T is approximately negative 2.244. We're using T to find a P value. That's step three, use T to find the P value. What's the P value? That area to the left hand side of your T. Remember that it's a left tail graph. If you look at your graph, your graph is a left tail graph because your alternative hypothesis is less than, less than, it means that you have a left tail graph. So we want to know what is this area, what is this p-value to the left side of negative 2.244. So you have two options. You can use an online calculator like this website,
you can enter your t-score here, the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, and you can use a significance level, which is 5%. And since you have a one tail graph, use one tail, and the p-value is going to be 0 0.02144. This is the website that you're using. The T-score, degrees of freedom, 14 minus 1, which is 13. Level of significance, 5%. One tail hypothesis testing. And the p-value is 0 0.02144. So the p-value of this area is about 2%. Step four. Now check to see if p-value is less than equals to alpha or not. Well, p-value is almost 2%. Alpha is 5%. Obviously, 2% is less than equals to 5%. Since 2% is less than equals to 5%, so we reject the null hypothesis. Okay. We reject the null hypothesis. Now take a look at the hypothesis here. The null hypothesis and the claim are the same thing. Since the null hypothesis and the claim are the same, we reject the claim. We reject the claim as well. Okay. At 5% level of significance, we reject the claim that the mean price is at least $2,500. Let me show you how to use your calculator. Very good. So to use your calculator, turn on your calculator. Let's see, let me clear this. I put this in a box for you. Calculator. So turn on your calculator, go to stat, and then go to test. So go to test. Okay. Okay, you already selected this. So let me just erase the whole thing. So I think my calculator needs um, to be reset. It. Okay, one second plus. Now let me go to reset, all RAM, reset, and second plus. Reset the defaults. Perfect. So go to stat, go to tests. It's still going here. Shouldn't we go to Z test? Let me see. Maybe I'm selecting a wrong bottom here. Okay. Start and test. Oh, okay. We went to the Z test instead of B test. Okay. Very good. 